clear cells when you see this is clear cell carcinoma papillae papillary carcinoma perinuclear halo chromophobe growing like a plant and all the nucleus shifted to the periphery with extensive desmoplasia is Bereni duct cancers, right? So these are the four uh, important cancers that you have to remember. Apart from that, I told you, XP translocation is a mixture of clear cell and papillary and your medullary carcinoma basically rises in patients with sickle cell traits, okay? So these are classical renal cell carcinomas which all of you should be remembering. Remember renal cell carcinomas invade renal vein, number one. Number two, they can present with a lot of paraneoplastic manifestations with hypertension, hypercalcemia, polycythemia being common ones, okay, so they can present or hepatic dysfunctions. So they are a lot of paraneoplastic manifestations that can uh, occur with renal cell carcinoma. Apart from that, you have to remember, see, renal cell carcinoma is one tumor which usually presents with mass, pain and hematuria, but usually till the time their size doesn't become extensive, they can remain asymptomatic. So this is in contrast to one more cancer which is very important to know here is urothelial cancer of the renal pelvis. Urothelial cancer of the renal pelvis. Now this is a cancer which occurs in the renal pelvis and the unique point that you have to remember is this tumor cells they arise because they arise in the pelvis as soon as they arise so they can obstruct the pelvis and the patient can present with hydronephrosis so they can obstruct the pelvis and the patient will start presenting with hydronephrosis and because they are obstructing the pelvis they can also present with hematuria so they are the these are the tumors urothelial carcinomas of the renal pelvis are those tumors which manifest very early so you catch them very early because they have associated hematuria quickly present with hematuria and they present with hydronephrosis so they are caught very early in contrast to the renal cell carcinomas which which are picked up later urothelial carcinomas of the renal pelvis are caught up very early because they usually present with hematuria quick past and because they are urothelial carcinomas so they usually are made up of transitional cell transitional cell carcinoma so usually they are a type of bladder cancer only they are like transitional cell carcinoma and remember whenever a person has a urothelial carcinoma of the renal pelvis they usually have an associated bladder cancer also so there is usually associated bladder cancer also okay so that's another point that you have to remember there's usually associated bladder cancer also that's a unique point you have to remember so there is either bladder cancer or there is dysplasia in the bladder some bladder lesion will always be present when there is a urothelial cancer so these are some points about urothelial carcinoma of the renal pelvis they manifest very early with hematuria or hydronephrosis and whenever a urothelial carcinoma of renal pelvis is present it is usually associated with the dysplasia or the carcinomas in the bladder Okay, so there's something in the bladder or the ureter or bladder lining because once the transitional cell carcinomas are occurring in one part, so urethral carcinomas have a very important tendency that if something happens to me, it should happen to all the transitional cells. So if transitional cell carcinoma transitional cells are involved in the pelvis they will definitely be involved in the other part of the urothelium also so they can be associated with bladder cancer so they you have very high chances of multifocality that is very very classical of urothelial carcinoma of renal pelvis okay that is what you have to remember right these complete the malignant lists of the renal cell carcinoma okay to quickly make a gist of what we have started here is a chart so here is a chart the chart says that we have studied just now we have clear cell and papillary which arises from the PCT and the mutations VHL is most common in clear cell and trisomy 7 is very common in the papillary and we have hereditary leomyomatosis syndrome which has to be caught in papillary carcinoma and you know that single mass multifocal samuma bodies are very very characteristic here okay okay whereas in chromophobe RCCs you have just now studied Berthog tube syndrome which codes for codes for folliculin gene that's another important point and that is why it is associated with a lot of fibrofolliculomas in the skin uh, you know, skin and pendagel tumors. Extensive hypodiploidy is seen, extensive hypoploidies are seen in chromophobe RCCs and they have a perinuclear halo which is very, very characteristic and the stain that we use here is Hales colloidal iron. In collecting duct cancer, it's the least common. Remember, Hobnils has an extensive dysmoplasia as there. Medullary carcinoma of the kidney usually associated with sickle cell trait and smart CB and INI is very characteristic mutation. And of course, whenever we have a mixture of clear cell and papillary, we know this is an XP translocation cancer. And the gene involved is TFE3. 
free okay so that makes a gist of renal cell carcinoma which you should paste on your wall and always always remember it right guys okay so that's about your clear cell carcinoma which everybody should be clear now let's come to the benign renal cell tumors okay so let's say what are the benign renal cell tumors 